He's Nico style. He's Nico style. You're Nico style. I'm Nico style. Are there any other Nico style I should know about? Nico style. I'm out of here. While it only exists in the Kengen series, the Nico style has an extensive history that's extremely well represented throughout Kengen. Starting with Tokita Oma at the beginning of Kengen Ashura, dozens of fighters since have either learned some of the Nico style and incorporated it into their own fighting style, learned a related art, or learned the Nico style itself. Let's look at the most iconic style in Kengen and go over its history, potential inspiration, and practitioners. Also, I am first and foremost a grappler Baki expert, and while I have read all of Kengen up to the current, I would not consider myself an expert, so I might forget something, but I'll give this my best shot. Nico style, or the Two Tigers style, is a style of modern jujutsu created by Gao Mukaku from evolving his own Gao style and mixing it with some Kaiwan style for a martial art better suited for the modern era. The style as a whole can be broken down into four different forms, or katas. The adamantine kata, which specializes in tensing one's muscles to defend against an attack or hit harder. The flame kata, the form that focuses on footwork and movement. Redirection kata, the part of Nico style dealing with force manipulation and redirection. And finally, water kata, the kata for grappling. Nico style is one of the most effective martial arts in Kengen, and that's because the style focuses on the two most important aspects of an effective martial art being combat applicable, and being able to adapt to any given situation, focusing on general ideas rather than specific set forms when it comes to the application of its techniques. Many of its practitioners, such as Oma, Fei, and Agito, had to use it to survive unthinkable situations and conditions, such as Oma's surviving growing up on the inside, a section of Japan that's completely lawless and filled to the broom with the worst killers and most heinous people imaginable, Fei being one of three survivors of training with Tiger Nico out of 4,000 initial students, and of course Agito using Formless and what he knew of the Nico style to survive his goo ritual, where he was placed in an enclosed space with dozens of other presumably trained children and was told to kill all the others until only one of them was left. And I think that's ample enough evidence to suggest that Nico style is indeed one of Kengen's most powerful martial arts. Being that it was a martial art devised by Mukaku in an attempt to unite the inside, it was more or less a case of martial arts evolution. If a technique wasn't effective in live combat against an opponent or groups of opponents that may be armed with any kind of weapon and range from every skill level imaginable in a no-rules fight, it either didn't make it into the style or was modified until it was effective. Furthermore, because of the adaptive and ever-evolving nature of the style, there are multiple schools of Nico style that, while having the same core concepts, are vastly different to one another. Just think about that for a second, really let that sink in. You could fight a Nico style fighter, Koga, let's say, and have it be the hardest fight you've ever fought, but you come out victorious. You have a brutal back and forth, but eventually, you download him. Not just his specific habits and movements, but how his style fundamentally functions. And with that knowledge, you win. Then you fight Oma, or Fei, or Agito, or Ryuki, or Kiryu, or hell, even Koga after like, a couple days, and your knowledge, your hard-fought understanding of the core of how the Nico style works, will be completely useless. It can be Nico 4's Nico style, which focuses on barehanded martial arts, Fei's Nico style, which is similar but more lethal to the opponent and practitioner alike, it could be Agito's Formless, which completely removes forms and patterns for a hyper-focus and adaptability, Ryuki's more traditional Gao style that's equal parts barehanded combat as it is the use of or defense against weapons, or even Kiryu's Nico style, which is like Oma's but mixed with Koei style, or Koga's Nico style, which is similar to Oma's but uniquely his own. It's basically Japanese Jujutsu-flavored MMA with a Kung Fu influence and is easily the most powerful fighting style in the verse due to its raw versatility, covering every aspect of combat in its katas. That's not to say it's invincible and allows its fighters to low diff everyone and has no weaknesses, only that it typically has, in the past, made fighters exceptionally more powerful by their learning it, and it does an amazing job of covering its weaknesses. Think about it. If the style had any major weaknesses to exploit, Mukaku likely would have died before having a chance to pass it on, or at the very least the Nikos or Oma would have died while using it to try to defend themselves in the inside. As of the current, 
Oma has evolved his Nico style by training with a similar style, the Kurei style, and it seems to be focusing on martial arts principles and concepts more than refining or creating techniques. Ryuki seems to be going to the past to advance his Gao style, taking to learning Long Clan style, and Koga seems to be headed for the future, simply pitting himself against as many different styles as possible, and training with as many martial artists as he can to gain as many techniques and defenses against other techniques, situations, and styles as he can. The more the series goes on, the more we'll be able to see of the Nico style's evolution, be it in the form of Oma's Nico style, Ryuki's Gao style unearthing Gao and Nico style history, or Koga's Nico style potentially evolving into something else entirely. Of course, Oma's Nico style is the one that's most well known, but as I mentioned prior, there are many other styles of Nico style and many different practitioners that each have their own spin on things. Take, for example, the first master of the Nico style, founder of the style, Gao Mukaku, who created the style by taking Gao style, a supposed classical jujutsu style that was actually a modern jujutsu style he created in the 1940s by mixing together a bunch of techniques he stole from other jujutsu styles with his long clan style, and evolving it by fighting in the inside. He would go on to teach that style to seven young orphans that he named Tokita Niko, naming them after two districts in the inside, and though many of them would die due to being betrayed by one of the Nikos, Six, the traitor, and Four, Oma's master, would go on to continue the style. Six would pass the Niko style on to Fei Wang Fang, Kano Agito, Long Min, Ranjo, and Kiryu Setsuna, whereas Four would teach the Niko style to Oma, who in turn taught it to Koga. Ryuki would learn Niko style's parent art, Gao style, directly from Gao Mukaku himself. Unfortunately for Six, quantity does not outweigh quality. As Long Min and Ranjo are practically footnotes in the story, Agito is more of a practitioner of formless style, a descendant art of Nico style that only shares a couple similarities, and Kiryu mainly practices Koei style, but with that said, Six was able to produce one student whose Nico style rivals Oma's own, with Oma being the poster child of the Nico style, Fei Wang Fang. Oma, though, is the one to bring the Nico style into the eyes and minds of hundreds of thousands of people across the world, to help Baki on Netflix to bring a resurgence of interest and appreciation for martial arts anime again. It's easy to look at a lot of the techniques in Nico style, or the Nico style on the whole in practical application, and say, oh, well, it's just fantasy MMA, but I would highly urge you to reconsider that perception. While a lot of the Nico style seems to have named techniques for simple moves, and bears a striking resemblance to MMA in that it typically has an orthodox stance and features striking, grappling, takedowns, and ground fighting, these similarities are only skin deep. MMA is most typically a combination of boxing, Dutch kickboxing, or Muay Thai, and wrestling or BJJ, and you can see this in the positioning of the guard and how certain techniques or movements are performed, but also consider modern efficiency and the limits of human movement. Karate, Taekwondo, Kung Fu, and many other striking arts featuring kicks have the axe kick because there are only so many different ways to effectively move your body to attack. There's a named technique for hitting with every single conceivable part of the human body across the hundreds of different styles of martial arts, and an orthodox stance like Oma's is the best for what he does, engaging in stand-up or in ground fighting with strikes and grappling. Because the Nico style is a complete martial art that engages in the same way MMA does by virtue of being multiple styles mixed together, there are some similarities. But how and why the Nico style has an orthodox stance versus how and why most MMA fighters have theirs, and what comes of that stance is the important distinction. Nico style is more about adapting its principles to a specific situation, like a multi-tool, whereas MMA is more about having a different technique for any situation, like a giant toolbox. So most Nico styles are built upon the premise of having dozens of techniques that you can adapt to use in any circumstance. No one kata will be practiced the exact same way across different practitioners. No one move will be done the same between different fighters. And no one use of a move will exactly or completely mirror a different use of the move. Especially when you start getting into secret techniques and combined katas. That, I believe, is rooted in the original idea that Nico style was developed to be an answer to any approach. Be it against a bigger opponent where you need to defend against blows that would knock someone of your stature out in one hit, and you need to punch above your weight class, against a group of opponents that you need clean footwork to evade and engage individually, an armed opponent you need to take down, grapple, and lock down the weapon of, 
or even a group of armed enemies you need to constantly control and redirect, the Nico style has any and every kind of technique to deal with each scenario that you can use or mix and match across its four different katas, and a fifth kata and secret techniques if all else fails. This led to the creation of the Adamantine Kata, Flame Kata, Water Kata, and Redirection Kata respectively, and while some Nico styles deal primarily in techniques in specific Kata, some deal in techniques from all Kata, and some even mix and combine techniques from different Kata for new techniques when needed, there exists no version of Nico style that is stagnant, that only uses one Kata and never mixes or adapts techniques. That's where Nico style succeeds, where Gao style fails. Gao style is like a specialized version of MMA. It's a mixed martial art of jujitsu and kung fu with many different techniques, but a limited number of techniques and limited application, whereas Nico style is one singular martial art with the techniques, adaptability, and versatility to basically create an endless array of new techniques and strategies on a dime. Before Oma or Sense, there's never been a manga martial arts fighter with such a varied style with so many different techniques and moves. Well, except for the 15 and a half other fighters in the series that practice the Nico style, Faye's own version of the Nico style is the closest to Oma's in terms of both level of mastery and being fleshed out through the use of katas and techniques, and it was awesome to see. That said, in both regards, it still pales in comparison to Oma's Nico style, and while it might be difficult to make the different styles of Nico style distinct from one another, a keen eyed viewer should have no problem because the different versions are flavored by the philosophies, mentalities, and experiences of their users. Most of the martial arts we see in manga are real life martial arts with their own real life history and techniques, but Nico style is completely original to Kengen. Yet in spite of that, it has become such a staple of martial arts manga that you'll find just as many how to do Nico style training videos and Nico style workout videos on YouTube as you will for most any other martial art despite being a completely unknown quantity outside of Kengen. And that is the power of a good martial arts manga the power to influence martial arts and or manga fans on the whole to try to replicate a fictional style in real life, to learn about martial arts if you're only a manga fan, or about manga and anime if you're only a martial arts fan, and to expose entire communities of fans the world round to something new and wonderful, be it manga and anime, like Dragon Ball, Bleach, JoJo's, or JJK, or the history and culture behind martial arts. And Oma and his Nico style are one of the few champions of both worlds that we have to thank for their being joined together. That's it for this episode of Combat Clarification. Comment down below what you think of the Nico style. Be sure to hit that like button, because if this video gets 60 likes in one week, you guys will get the next Combat Clarification video on the original Nico style, Baki Hanma's Total Fighting Style. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all the combat clarification releases on the channel. Special thanks to Nika Switch for suggesting this video. I've been Red Fox, the executioner of my YouTube haters, and this has been Combat Clarification, Kengen Styles Explained. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.